Thank you, Aaron. I'm very happy to be here today, and as you can hear me, I'm French. But you know, I left France about 20 years ago for Asia, and here I am today to talk to you about the business I'm now heading, for which, to be honest with you, if a few years back you would have mentioned this to me, I would have opened wide eyes and wondering what you were speaking to me about. So let's get ready, sit back and relax, and let's take our crew for the next 20 minutes flight presentation. So yesterday, we had a quiz, you know, about Walt Disney and checking if we knew about the main characters. Now this morning, it's about those four guys on the top. So I don't know if you remember her, their names, but I'm sure your kids do. So the first one is Kowalski. Then you have Skipper. Then you have, say it again, Private, Private Enrico. And here we go to Madagascar. So to get there from here, it will take no less than probably 36 hours by flight. And minimum will be on three planes. We'll have a fourth of a night in the capital, Tananarivo, because there is no same day connecting flight. And we'll arrive in the southwest of Madagascar in Toliara. Again, this morning you heard a lot about IoT, you know, but don't get it wrong. It's Indian Ocean Trepang. Nothing to do with the Internet of Things now. Eh? We are way away from this concept of what we are going to face in the next few years. So it all started about uh, 10 years ago and with this guy in red, you know. He's the head of the Department of Marine Biology and Biomimetics of the University of Mons in Belgium. And he discovered with his team an artificial reproduction method for the Oloturia scabra sea cucumber species. And then we decided to create this company. And the problem we saw is something we are all too well familiar with. The wild stock fisheries are being depleted. This is putting pressure on the traditional income of the fishermen. And then they decide to go for the easy catch. And what I didn't know is that well, sea cucumbers is so easy for them to catch. Here it is on the bottom of the seafloor. They just need to walk. And what has been terrible is that over the past 10 years, the Chinese demand for this product, which is for them somehow a luxury uh, item for their meals and much less now, is such that this species has been listed by the IUCN as an endangered species. And by going further into the lagoon to harvest it, the fishermen are putting at stake their future income. So Indian Ocean Trepang is a small and medium enterprise who carries out the industrial aquaculture of sea cucumber. We help fight the extinction of the marine fauna by providing alternative income to remote fishermen villages. The response we put in place for the challenge we saw has been to create a, a fully integrated process. So that means we start with a hatchery, a nursery, and we subcontract to village, coastal villages a portion of our production, and then we buy it back from them in order to process it. What we do, we provide the fishermen villagers with small juveniles, which are about the size of your thumb, 20, 25 grams. And about eight to 12 months later, we buy them back, the adults, which is about 25 centimeters big, and about 400 grams. Now it takes eight to 10 months for this to happen. And this part of our activity, as I said, we subcontract a portion of our at sea growing activity. It's only possible because we are having also our own sea pens, which gives us the economy of scale to make it possible. If we were only doing this, we would just be an NGO, and after a few years, we'd just go back home. So here is a snapshot of how it works to do the full processing of the sea cucumber uh, aquaculture, hatchery about two months, pre-growing, 
two to three months, depending on the seasons, because we have winters and summers. Maturing at sea is between eight to eight months, eight, 14 months. So in total, as you see, it's minimum one year and more likely 15 to 18 months. And the final product here, as you see, is only, in average, 20 grams, whereas the fresh one that you harvest from the sea is about 400 grams. So you lose 95% of the weight. So this is our operations in Toliara. So here you have the hatchery. Here you have our nursery ponds. We take the water from the lagoon here. We built the artificial canal. It goes through the network here. And then you have some sedimentation ponds, and we release it into the water. As I speak, we have already extended here our nursery with 20 similar ponds here. And, and you have here a, a picture of the one we just completed two months ago. Now I want to talk to you about a village called Tampuluve. Tampuluve is located 150 kilometers north of Tulea, where we are. And it exactly looks as it is on this picture. It has about 1,000 inhabitants. Their way of living is pretty simple, wooden plank houses. Roofs are made of branches or corrugated metal. And for us to reach Tampuluve from Tulear, well, it takes us about six to eight hours by dust roads and four-wheel drivers. So I want to introduce you to Seraphine. Seraphine lives in Tampuluve. Her husband is a fisherman, and she's one of our farmers. So the business model we implemented is such that we have three key features. The first one, it's a quadripartite business, whereby, as I mentioned earlier, we subcontract to fishermen villagers a portion of the at sea growing activity. And here you can see a night harvest in Seraphine's village. Then it's ourselves, private company. Then you have NGOs who lead, train, monitor the fishermen families. And they also finance the first setup of their sea pens. One family has about 2,000 square meter of sea pen, and it costs 1,000 US dollar to set it up. So this is paid for by the NGOs. And finally, we are working with universities on the biology of sea cucumber. The second feature of our business model is that we don't give any food. Actually, the sea cucumbers feed on the bio waste, and their main diet is bacteria. So with the tides going in and out, naturally, they find what they need to eat. Now look at this beautiful sea cucumber here. It must be minimum 500 grams. You know who it belongs to? It belongs to Seraphine. That's her sea pen. So second feature is very low energy. As much as we could, we have solar power in our system. This is a hatchery. And you can see on the roof the solar panels. It is 80% solar powered. And in terms of maintenance, it's very low tech. Here you can see, you have an idea who is, it? is this on this picture? It's Seraphine, of course, with her buddies, cleaning the fences of her sea pen. Now, Seraphine has three things to do to maintain her sea pen. Clean the fences, hunt the crabs, and do some stock taking from time to time. That's all she has to do. The third piece of our business model is scalability. Scalability is pretty easy. It's just a copy paste of what we have implemented, where we need to have the private sector and some social activity with the coastal villagers. The NGO side, it depends on which country we go to. In some countries, we would need them. In some countries, eventually not. And the universities, we are working with universities in Belgium, I mentioned. University in Madagascar, and also with one university in Thailand. Then all this brings to the fishermen villagers economic empowerment. And you see this picture. This is some of our farmers attending a training delivered by an NGO on saving management. You see this lady in blue? You know who she is? Seraphine, yes. 
And finally, all this brings gender equality opportunity for boys and girls to go to school. Now, you know the mother of those two little cute girls? <laughs> Seraphine, of course. Look at this. This is after one night harvest in Seraphine's village. So they're all smiling, they're happy, and that is great. So the impact to the fishermen is such that on average, on a monthly basis, with the sea cucumber farming, they can double their monthly income from 44 US dollars to 88. The average earning for those communities is 1.5 US dollars a day. Then, with this money, the first thing they do, they spend the money on education for their children. Now, for Seraphine to send her kids to school, she has to pay 2.5 US dollars per month per child. After she has spent this money for schooling, then she starts to spend money on housing improvement. She buys chairs, table. Then the next step is for the roof, corrugated metal roofs, and so on. And overall, all of this brings some social community development and economic power. So the impact to the lagoon is such that we preserve the lagoon integrity. We don't give any food I mentioned. Of course, we don't use any antibiotics. Similarly, we don't use any chemical. By doing so and having this sea cucumber in the open sea in the sea pens, it enables, due to natural spawning, to the natural repopulation of the lagoon with this species. And thanks to the sea cucumber being back in the lagoon, other species can replenish as well. Now, everything is not rosy, as you know. You know I, I described to you so far the nice part of the story. Now, the difficult part of the story is that for the at sea growing activities, the sea cucumber are in the open sea in the sea pens, as you can see here. And this is here at low tide. So everybody, anybody can walk. The value of one sea cucumber fresh you take out of the water is pretty close to one US dollar, which is very similar to the daily income of the fishermen. So that means in one village where we do have 20 or 40 families doing sea cucumber farming, they don't trust each other. They're afraid the next guy is going tonight to take some sea cucumber from his sea pen and put in his sea pen. That's the first problem we face. The second one is that the village, which is two kilometers away, is not doing sea cucumber farming. And by the way, over the past 10 years, you have quite a number of Chinese businessmen who have established themselves in Madagascar. And they went through all the coastal villagers and said, hey, anytime, if you bring to me any sea cucumber, I'll buy from them. So they have a network of collectors who basically buy from anybody. So it's easy for the thieves to find a way the next day to sell whatever they have got during the night. So the solution for this has been to put some watchtowers where the communities are having, I would say, third party security guards because they don't trust each other. It works more or less, but it works pretty OK so far. So in terms of market, uh, my estimate is that last year, 2016, the market size was about 7,000 tons of dried products. Dried product, you remember, one piece in average 20 grams. 7,000 tons of those. It means most of it is wild catchers. There are in the world, to my knowledge, about probably less than five aquaculture setup for sea cucumber of this species. So that means 7,000 ton, 20 gram one piece. If you do the math, it's about 500 million of pieces which are taken out of the sea every year, whatever the size, because it's wild catches. Now, out of this number, last year, we sold five ton, out of which one was coming from our partnership with the villagers. Now, in 2021, I anticipate the market to grow at 7% per annum which is not so big, which means that it will be at 10,000 ton. And my vision is that at that time, we'll be selling 50 tons, out of which 10 will come from the villagers. Today, the market is all going to China. 
When I say China, it's a bit more. It's China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, South Korea. Some of it goes to the States and Canada, but difficult to export there due to the uh, authorization you need. And it's being sold at the low end of the value, which means bulk and dry. So what needs to be done is to get up the value chain by starting to go for products which have more value add, such as frozen, ready to cook. And this is already happening in Hong Kong, in Singapore, and a little in China. The next step will be frozen, ready to eat. We are already seeing also some new segments appearing on the fresh beauty and health products. And there are also some initiatives, especially here in Australia, about pharmaceuticals. Now, this is the natural habitat of this species, Oloturia scabra, around the world. So you see it's pretty wide. And you do have some initiatives that have taken place here in Australia over the past few years. And one of them has been very successful, which is headed by Tasmanian Seafood in the Northern Territories. Now, my, my vision and what I'm working on today is that in 10 years from now, to have 15 operations across the Asia Pacific, impacting directly the lives of 10,000 families, which means probably impacting indirectly about six times this number. Now, to go forward, my challenge is to accelerate our development. Speed is of the essence. And to do that, I need two things. First, to be able to get in touch with people who are excited by what we are doing in various countries in the Asia Pacific, and definitely here in, in <coughs> Australia as well. And second, as you know, people are making the difference. So it's all, all about getting the right people with hopefully some aquaculture experience, being talented, and most important, being passionate. So if any of you are interested or know anybody who are interested, please get in touch with me after this conference. So I've talked to you a lot about Seraphine. Now it's time for you to hear her voice. <laughs> So thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to Seraphine's story. And I hope if you haven't yet tried sea cucumber that you will one day. It's all about the cook and the recipe. And I can tell you when it's well cooked, it's very good. So thank you very much, and bon appétit.